Imagine a world in total darkness. Disconcerting, isn't it? Yet for millions of people, that darkness is a daily reality. Blindness takes away so much more than just your vision. Blindness can impede your ability to gain an education. It can prevent you from finding work. It can lead your family into poverty and destitution. Yet the truth of the matter is that for 250 million people around the world, 80% of blindness can be avoided or cured. The Orbis Flying Hospital sends teams of medics around the world not only to cure blindness, but to teach local doctors how to do the same. The company SIE, Structural Integrity Engineering, is currently converting an ex-FedEx MD-10 into the latest addition to the Orbis Flying Hospital fleet. Here to discuss the project is the president of SIE, Dr. Matthew Krieger, and program manager, John Courtright. John Courtright, a familiar face. Welcome to the interview. Pleasure nice to, to have see you, here. Steve. Dr. Matt Krieger, not such a familiar face, but equally welcome. Thanks for joining yeah. us today. Well, thank you. For uh, us. We're going to talk about SIE's involvement with Orbis, but let's start at the very beginning. Orbis may be uh, an unfamiliar project to many of our viewers, so let's talk about the project itself. What is Orbis? What does it do? Well, Orbis is a, um, an international charity that uh, focuses on, on eye problems and eye issues worldwide. They have a number of, of programs, various outreach programs, various clinics. Uh, the part of the pro Orbis program that we're involved with is they have a, a flying eye hospital, which is mainly a, uh, a hospital for teaching. It, it does surgery on the ground with uh, large video systems and classroom up front for 46 people. What sort of countries typically would it visit? They've gone to uh, Mongolia, they've gone to Nicaragua. They travel every few months. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine to some pretty challenging places. The, the, I, the airports need some minimum support. I mean, they can't land in the middle of the desert and not be able to get fuel mm -hmm. or water. And so, so there, there, there are requirements. Uh, the more facilities that the airport has, the better. And what happens when the aircraft lands? Well, the, the first step is to, to unload a, a large, large amounts of, of equipment. They have uh, electrical generators and uh, air conditioning equipment that, that is taken out of the belly of the aircraft, uh, put on the ground and, and set up. They, ha they carry a crew of people on board in, in order to do that. Uh, once that's set up, they've had uh, patients prearranged uh, by, by crews that have gone there in advance of the hospital, and they are chosen for um, the value of doing those surgeries in terms of teaching. And, and then they go through a number of weeks of, of surgery. There's an extensive video systems on, on the aircraft that uh, allow for um, both lecturing of, of the doctors during the surgery and questions by the doctors to the surgeons dur during, the, during okay. the surgery. John, if I can turn to you, let's talk about the aircraft that they use. Well, uh, the, the aircraft that SIE is working on designing and uh, doing the engineering and certification is an MD-10. Mm -hmm. But the original Orbis aircraft was a DC-8, and it was donated by United Airlines. And for uh, well over 10 years, 15 years, Orbis operated their hospital on this DC-8 platform. That aircraft became, as we all do, aged, <laughs> and it was retired. And FedEx donated a DC-10, DC-10-10, uh, to the Orbis organization, and they began flying that in the early 1990s, and it operated as a flying eye hospital as well. Um, over time, that aircraft got older, and uh, uh, Orbis needed to upgrade and, and move on to a newer platform. And the current aircraft that we're working on in uh, the California desert is uh, an MD-10, which is which is a DC-10-30 with an upgraded flight deck, full electronics, EFIS displays, and so on. Uh, it has a much longer range and a much bigger payload. And it uh, serves the, the needs of the Orbis humanitarian mission quite well. Now, I imagine most of the people involved in flying the plane or 
doing the operations, I, I assume they're volunteers. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. um, this is almost an entirely, I wouldn't say 100% uh, volunteer uh, operation, but the pilots volunteer their time. Mm -hmm. uh, the doctors, the surgeons volunteer their time as well, as well the nurses and some of the technicians. And there's quite a, quite a queue, quite a long list of surgeons who want to go on the next mission. And so it's uh, quite an exciting opportunity for them. Let's turn to SIE, Dr. Krieger. Uh, tell us a little bit about the work that you do, and how did you become involved in this Orbis project? Well, SIE is a company that um, most of our work is involved in uh, major aircraft modifications. Uh, we've been very heavily involved in modifying <coughs> passenger aircraft into freighter aircraft. You know, Seventy percent of the freighter aircraft flying throughout the world are converted passenger air airplanes. Uh, we're doing work right now uh, for GE, developing a pylon to modify their flying uh, testbed aircraft. Uh, we've modified airplanes to put in Wi-Fi installations and interior modifications mm -hmm. of, of a wide range. So we, we've been doing that for about 33 years now. Okay. And, uh, and we've done a lot of work for the past 20 years with FedEx. And uh, FedEx had donated the aircraft and they, they asked us to offer a proposal in order to do this modification. So what are some of the challenges involved in modifying what was a previously a FedEx aircraft flying cargo around the world to turning it into a, a, a mobile well, hospital? Well, one of the things that's unique about this particular flying eye hospital as opposed to the other two is that we've maintained this airplane as a, a cargo airplane. Uh, it, it, it was easier to get certified that way because otherwise you would have to show that every piece of equipment in the hospital wouldn't fall apart during a landing, or, mm -hmm. and, and that, that became, would have been very ex expensive. Uh, so this airplane has been maintained as, as a freighter. It's a little unique. Now, we've converted the front half of the airplane, which is the, the simultaneously a, a teaching hospital classroom, rather, and also it, it's the, uh, a passenger aircraft. All the crew and all the nurses and everyone, the technicians, all fly on, on, on that aircraft to, su to, the, to the site. Uh, so we've had to convert it from a uh, freighter to a passenger, which is rather unusual. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Omni, Omni Air International donated a passenger aircraft, and we've been using that as a donor aircraft for the components ah. that go into, into the, the non-hospital region. So you've been uh, taking spares from one aircraft and putting it well, on not, another? Well, not spares, the actual line is the lavatories, e oh, everything okay. that, that's had to be added. We, we've had to add lavatories in the front of the aircraft and lavatories in the back of the mm -hmm. aircraft. We've had to um, open up doors that had previously been closed, essentially, uh, because there was a, a freight of aircraft and you didn't need those doors. So we, we've taken anything that we could take and reuse from the donated um, DC, uh, MD-10 um, uh, has been used mm. and, and that of course has saved uh, a great deal of money with, for Orbis. Of course many of our members will be eager to know whether the, there's an IFE system on board. Well Steve there is but not the kind that w you and I are generally familiar with. Um, this is a teaching hospital and there is a pre-op room, an operating room and a recovery room and in the operating room, there are microphones and video cameras which focus in on what the doctor is doing to the patient. And the doctor is enunciating or st stating, what am I doing? What is this procedure that I'm doing to help correct this individual's eye problem? That's being fed to the front of the aircraft where the 46 seats are, and it's being fed to the local physicians, nurses, and other medical personnel as a teaching uh, opportunity. So they can actually see the operation going on in real time. And it's quite effective, quite helpful. Now Orbis has been adopted by Apex as its official charity, Correct. which seems, when you think about it, it seems quite a, a, a nice marriage. Yes, it is. I think it's a wonderful combination of the content providers, the equipment providers, the other skills that are required to make a system integrated onto an aircraft with such a wonderful humanitarian mission. It's, uh, I don't know of anything else going on like that anywhere in the world. Dr. Krieger, what's the attitude of your 
team, your staff, when they get invited to work on this project? Oh, every, everybody is, obviously, everybody's enthusiastic about wor working on it. We, we, have, uh, we have people on site that uh, normally wouldn't be working on an aircraft. Normally, they would be working in an office, and, and they've asked to be on site uh, to, to help uh, work with the issues that arise during the modification. So, no, it, it, it's obviously a, a project for us that has its technical challenges, which is important for everybody. Um, and, but knowing that you're doing some good at the same time is, is uh, almost engineering, I would argue, is, is for good. Yes. It's not as good as this is. <laughs> uh, and and it, gives, it gives everybody a, a good feeling. It's a very tangible way to see that you're doing something good. How long has the whole project taken from start to finish? And when will it be finished? When will we see this aircraft it, flying? It, it should be flying in the spring, in, in, in the, in the, uh, f probably the end of the first quarter of 2015. The project has been going on for about eight, uh, two years, to, on the order of two years. Um, we've had, we as an engineering organization, have had anywhere from, depending on the time and what tasks were being done, from eight to 25 people working on the project. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we also incorporate some outside support, some outside technical consultants. Um, the people working on, on physically doing the, the labor on the aircraft typically run a crew of 15 or 20 people. And, and um, it's, it's, it's a great deal of work. There's a, there's a, uh, it's a pretty big airplane, a lot of parts, a lot of, a lot of issues to deal with. And John, an opportunity for other firms within Apex to get involved, do you think? Oh, absolutely. We've had uh, some wonderful contributions by uh, interior companies, uh, as well as uh, uh, bag bin, carpeting, uh, and other interior furnishings. It's been excellent. And for people who want to find out more or perhaps want to see if they can contribute, how do they go about it? Well, they would go to one of two places. Uh, the first would be the Orbis website, and that would be www.orbis.org backslash F-E-H. That's for Flying Eye Hospital. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to the SIE website. That's uh, www.sieinc.com, and we have essentially links to the same thing as well as some of our other programs that are going on. But you wouldn't mind if people gave you a ring personally? And oh, no, uh, please do. Excellent. Gentlemen, you're doing a very worthwhile project. Uh, I wish you all the best. Um, I expect you'll be thrilled, as everyone will be, when that aircraft finally takes off and uh, does what it's meant to do, which is restoring the sight of people in... Um, perhaps poorer places than we're lucky enough to live in. We're very proud of this project. Yes, we are. And everybody associated with it, uh, everybody associated with it. Matt, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Steve, John. Steve, pleasure seeing you again. Thanks a lot. Thanks. We hope you found our special feature on the Orbis Flying Hospital interesting and informative. You can obtain more information at www.orbis.org or www.sieinc.com. On behalf of everyone on the PME interview team, we wish you season's greetings and a happy new year. We'll be back in 2015 with some more great PME interviews. Brought to you by Global Eagle Entertainment.